certain day like a hail of microscopic bullets. Happily, there's no cause for alarm. Cosmic rays don't do much damage, except perhaps to the peace of mind of astronomers. Despite their misleading name, cosmic rays are actually solid particles. In fact, they're atomic nuclei traveling at nearly the speed of light. They hit the top of our atmosphere so fast and so hard that air molecules are blasted into fragments by the impact. Scientists wanting to figure out these cosmic bullets have to try to identify the incoming particle from these fragments, and that isn't easy. At least we can study cosmic rays from ground level. Arrays of light detectors are used to peer up into the atmosphere, looking for the brief, subtle flashes that reveal a cosmic ray impact far above. Lower energy cosmic rays sometimes make it through the atmosphere and pass right through our bodies completely unnoticed or almost completely unnoticed. Some people actually can see cosmic rays with their unaided eyes, but there's a catch. They have to be flying in space. There is human experience of seeing these cosmic rays, and that comes from astronauts. The astronauts close their eyes at night and sleep. They see flashes of light. After a while, they don't notice them anymore, but first-time astronauts notice this very specifically. And these are due to cosmic rays. Actually, they're very special cosmic rays. They're not just protons or electrons, but they're nuclei of iron or oxygen, heavier cosmic rays. When they go through the eyeball, they deposit energy and make flashes of light. A major problem with cosmic rays is to figure out their origin. It's impossible to trace the paths of these particles back to their source because cosmic rays don't travel in straight lines. That, in turn, is because they carry an electric charge. And so when they encounter the magnetic field of our Earth or even the faint, very low magnetic field of the galaxy, they change their direction. When particles go by a magnetic field, they are curved. So we can't see exactly where they came from. Their directions have been lost in the magnetic noise of the galaxy. And we just see these particles coming mostly from all directions. We want to understand what produced them, where they came from. High energy astronomers think that most cosmic rays are produced during the explosion of supernovas. They've never been able to trace out the connection though. And for one special group of cosmic rays, the supernova explanation simply doesn't work. Cosmic rays that, that we've been talking about are produced perhaps in supernova explosions, but there are some very, very energetic cosmic rays. Only a handful have been detected, which are so energetic they defy explanation. When you have particles that are traveling at those kind of extremely high speeds, you know, essentially right at the speed of light with very high energies, they don't travel very far. Even in the vacancy of intergalactic space, they are absorbed by other kinds of radiation and transformed into other particles. So it's hard to understand these, these cosmic rays and, and to, to see where they came from. It's really a major paradox that they even exist. These ultra-energetic particles are few and far between. Three or four of them might be expected to hit a square kilometer of the atmosphere every century. Like the mysterious gamma ray bursters, these things don't appear concentrated towards the plane of the Milky Way. That suggests that they don't come from our galaxy at all, but from more distant sources, a billion or more light years away. But therein lies the paradox because these very, very energetic cosmic rays cannot travel that far. They can only travel tens of millions of light years before they're absorbed by light and other particles in intergalactic space. Why don't we see them coming from some particular object a few million light years away? We don't understand that. Cosmic rays are so paradoxical, they seem almost alien. Yet, it turns out that there's an odd connection 
between these mysterious cosmic visitors and life here on Earth. All the rich diversity of life on our planet is the result of four billion years of evolution. Evolution as we know it would be impossible if it weren't for the process of mutation or spontaneous random changes in genes. And cosmic rays are one of the few natural forces that can produce mutations. Every now and then, a cosmic ray goes plowing through a chromosome. Usually this is bad news for the chromosome's owner, but every few thousand times, the reconfigured gene actually gives its owner some kind of survival advantage. Given a bit of luck, this new gene might lead in time to a whole new species. You had a process like that run for a few billion years, and there's no telling what might happen. The light that our eyes can see is like looking at the universe through a keyhole. It's a very small fraction of the full richness of the electromagnetic spectrum. It lets you see things that go on with atoms and some molecules, period. That's the processes that, that give rise to visible light. But if you want to know the rest, if you want to know about the infrared glow from these vast clouds of interstellar gas and dust where stars form, if you want to know about the radio glow of our galaxy as cosmic rays circle around on magnetic fields, if you want to know about the X-ray glow of the hot part of the interstellar medium that probably fills most of the volume of our galaxy, if you want to know about the events that, that give rise to the chemical elements of which we are made in energetic events like supernovae, then you can't restrict your attention to that keyhole. You have to open up the entire electromagnetic spectrum, all the way from the radio at one end to X-rays and gamma rays at the other end. Astronomers who work with high energy radiation, cosmic rays, gamma rays, and X-rays, have a feeling of anticipation, a sense that the best is yet to come. I think there's a lot to be done in the future. Um, the more we observe objects, the more pictures we get, the more things we see we don't understand, which is really exciting because this means that the, the field of X-ray astronomy, it's not in its infancy anymore. It's kind of in its adolescent stages, but there's a whole lot to do. The highest reaches of the spectrum are revealing to astronomers a universe far stranger than they had ever imagined. Whether it scrambles our chromosomes or just gives us sunburn, high energy radiation from space is not to be taken lightly. <laughs>